another theme that you had mentioned, which you just briefly touched on, uh, maybe it's good to dovetail into that, is soul contracts. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe it connects with this purpose. And, and part of your work is to integrate these deeper levels of our being. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm very curious to see how you are allowing uh, or helping facilitating that for your clients and yourself as well. How, how have you done that? It's been an interesting process. I guess first I'll talk about it from like a more personal place, because like even as like a child, I, I always had a very, very curious mind. And I, in my mind, you know, anything was always possible. Right. And, and because of that, I, I've always gravitated towards like philosophical conversations about about like what happens after we die and like, what is there, what's out in space? And like, you, as a kid, I was like, you know, pondering these, these like deeper questions and, you know, we have always just been really open in terms of like the way that I see what happens to us after we leave our physical bodies and stuff like that. Like I grew up in a Muslim household and my dad's like pretty, he's very religious. And so, and he's always been that way since we were very, very little. And so having having a background with a very religious father who who really wanted me to do wanted all of us to do things in this particular order, in this particular way, because if you don't, you're going to go to hell or, you know, you're going to be you're going to meet the devil. You're going to meet Shaitan. You know, that was always it's always a thing. Right. And so, you know, you live you get to you like live your life. And in this way, he wanted us to live our lives with a little bit of like this fear kind of like, you know, going forward. And I knew that, again, that was one of the, the, the constraints came over me. I'm like, that doesn't feel right. I don't believe that. That doesn't sit well with me. And then it wasn't until I moved to San Diego and I started doing a lot of energy work and a lot of healing work that I really started to under, I truly started to understand like spirit, our spirits. I started to understand how you know, we would come into, we come into these physical bodies. This is earth is a big school and we come into these physical bodies and we come here to learn certain, certain lessons. And we come in with certain contracts. You're talking about soul contracts that from past life, because, you know, we lived many, many lifetimes. And so we come into these physical bodies to uh, learn certain lessons with, and then attached with these lessons sometimes are certain contracts that we have had in the past with other people, with other beings, and we come into this world and we reenact these certain scenarios to, to learn our lessons and to help to sometimes, you know, really like connect in that soul contract. And then other times it's like to break it when the contract is up. And so learning this way has been like the most freeing thing for me and my soul and my body, because it, it allows me to really take control and pay attention to this life because this is the one that I'm in right now. And so it allows me to like, look at all of the things that are around me and like the lessons, the precious lessons that I'm learning and all the beautiful people that are around me that are here to help me learn them, you know, and the vice versa and how, and how I'm here to help them on their journey and whatever the case may be. And so like that had, you know, once I understood that and then you talk about like soul contracts and then you understand that the soul is this thing that is just, it, it's this major thing that's in this physical body right now, but it still has like these huge, huge ties to so much beyond this physical and, and also tied to our ancestors, which is the other topic we were talking about and, and our ancestors, like the contracts that we have with them. And so for example, like, like bringing for, so like the soul contracts in spirit are one are one piece. But if we now talk about soul contracts in like this physical life. So like quick story, like when I was four, I was even a person and I was in my mom's belly. You're like barely yes. formed into much of anything. You just have like a little tiny little, you're like a little electric spark in there. My yeah. parents were like having like a hell of a time together. And my mother was not really like she was really not doing well in terms of like her emotional like mind and body she wasn't she wasn't doing well and yet I was this little zygote in her belly and so you know because of that I it's like imprinted on me at an early age that I was my one of my soul contracts was that like I was going to take away my mother's suffering you know and we do this as we, it's not even, it's so deep, 
you know, it's beyond the conscious mind. The conscious mind is like this tiny little layer. Then you have your sub subconscious mind underneath that. And then you have the whole unconscious mind, you know, underneath that. So it's like, it's so deep when you don't even at that stage, it's like you just connect to the feeling and that feeling of my mother suffering. And then, and then so when I became me in this body, one of my contracts was to make sure that my mother didn't suffer. So my whole life, I had that in the background guiding me, you know, like making sure that like I was making sure that my mother was OK. My mother was OK emotionally, even though she's she's a phenomenal woman and she's done so much work on herself to release a lot of the traumas that she experienced in her life. So she's doing great. But sometimes it's like you still have those contracts. You know, just because now she's doing great doesn't release you from that. It's like you still have made, you still have that contract that you made in utero that you were going to protect her and keep her safe. And so then how do you deal with releasing that? Because that contract doesn't really serve you at that time when you were small and in utero and connecting with your mother. It served, it had a purpose, but now as an adult, it doesn't have the same purpose. And so it's almost like as if like I see us as being such energetic beings. And so anytime that you have these soul contracts that aren't really serving you, it's like robbing you of your energy, you're um, adding to your life force. So it, it really is important to do what you can to release certain contracts so that it frees up that energy, frees you up energetically. And so, you know, the way that because it kind of dovetails into the the book. It did start with you by Mark Wolin, which is an extremely powerful book. And, yes. And talking about like the ancestral ties that we have and like how to go about number one, finding them and then and then and then finding the ties, finding the soul contracts that are connected to them, and then how to release them. And in the releasing process, you know, it's it's really about like seeing seeing that person that you have that contract with, seeing them as being like whole and completely in their own power. Like in my case, it's like me seeing my mother as being like a fully capable, fully functioning uh, woman filled with so much love and so much to give that she doesn't need me to hold that space in that way any longer. And it's like, as soon as you really see that and you really feel that, it's like that's when the contract dissolves and that's when like you you are like given back all of that excess energy that you were pouring into this contract. And it's very, very empowering and very, very freeing. Is that? Oh, absolutely. This, okay. is, this is really, really beautiful. I was just letting you kind of just pour out because I know that you've been working at it with, with so many angles or the angles of ancestors and dream work and some of the stuff we're going to talk about. But yeah, it's, it's such a rich topic and a few things came, came to mind. And, you know, also from, from kind of my own journey, this is as I was, we were talking uh, before we started, that for me, some of these things have come as a surprise and I've had to integrate them because in the beginning, I was like, I'm going straight to to spirit or being very philosophical, scientific. I want to know what the source of creation is. I want to know what the basis of reality is. Yeah. And I, I'm not, I, I'm, I was not so much interested in ancestors and other, other beings and other realms and stuff. Cause I didn't want to be distracted, but a lot of this came in that you're not going to reject different aspects of reality, but integrate them. Yes. So, um, so we, we have. Consciously or unconsciously, we have a story of the birds and the bees, you know, how it all came to be, mm -hmm. you know, and what is my place in, if I have this skin color or if I'm in this country, what does it actually mean? And it's, it's like a bigger family you're part of. Mm -hmm. it's, we're, and so predominantly in the world, we are right now in a materialistic culture. Yeah. So forget about spirits and ancestors. We're talking about not even having a soul. Yeah. You know, that's the paradigm that we're in no. for the most part and this book that you had shared with me mm -hmm. that it didn't start with you and i did end up watching a talk i forget the name of the gentleman if, if you if mark you Wollen. mark Wollen. there yeah. so uh we'll we'll put this in the show notes yeah. but i i didn't read the book but i heard a, a kind of a talk of his on, on science and non-duality like about half an hour 
And he connected with a lot of this research of, which is kind of in the time of Darwin, you know, Darwin was considered a hero where it's all about natural selection and survival of the fittest and ancestors don't really play a role. What your parents do doesn't really count, but what counts is what thousands of people have done before. Yeah. Only that matters, but immediate parents don't matter. So. Uh, I think there was a gentleman by the name of Lamarck who had proposed this idea that he thought that your immediate ancestors, uh, you know, he gave this example of if there are like these uh, long necked giraffes in the forest mm -hmm. and suddenly all the trees vanished, then in the very next couple of generations, you will see the necks shortening in size in the offspring. Yeah. Everybody dismissed that. And now we have a lot of research, you know, connecting it back to Mark's book of this epigenetics, where if your ancestors were in famine, then your chances of becoming obese are higher. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually a published study, very recent, where I saw mm -hmm. where it was from World War II people, you know, yeah. where, where they were a lot of famines and their children's. Guess who? The Dutch people are these giants. They had these immense growth, uh, growth sprouts yeah. because they were overcompensating for what their immediate ancestors had done. Yeah. So I feel like even scientifically, we are, we are kind of verifying this, so even in our genetic, in our DNA. Yeah. This memory of ancestors is, is there. Completely. Well, I was just going to say in that book, I think, you know, every, I think every, literally everybody should read this book because everybody has trauma and everyone's family has trauma. And it's really about the traumas that we don't talk about. Those are the ones that really imprint on our messenger RNA. And those are the ones that we pick up through our ancestral line. And he talks a lot in the beginning of the book all about these experiments that were done on mice. Mm -hmm. And, and showing how many generations, like one trauma affected like X amount of generations of these mice. So sad, you know, when you, when you, when they do the experiment to me, it's like, oh, my heart hurts, you know, but I mean, the fact that they were able to actually show that is very, 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 very valuable to us because, you know, living in a material, a materialized society, we, we look for proof. And that provides that proof, you know, that it, it's very real. Uh, and if you talk to, if you can, if you read the book and you follow what he says and you find like what rings true to you, like the, the statements that ring true to you that you know are tied to someone other than yourself and you go and you do that work, you're going to be amazed at the results. You'll be amazed. I couldn't believe the story that I was told when I, when I went through and I connected with my grandmother that I never met, she died before I was born and my great grandmother, obviously that I never knew. And I found out the stories. It was incredible. And to be able to now see them in a different way, in a different light and to rewrite those stories has created so much freedom for me. And I'm so grateful for it. He, the book is phenomenal. It is phenomenal. Yeah. I, I, I really want to look into that and actually one of the questions that came to me while I was uh, listening to his talk, which was kind of kind of short, and I think he he talked about going on a spiritual journey and being told, you know, he was expecting that that will give him deliver him the goods, yeah, the peace that he was seeking. Um, and the teacher, one of the teacher that he he says he was in a, this giant line, and when he met him, the first thing the teacher said was, "Go and make peace with your parents." Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he said he didn't listen at that time. It took him to hear it from someone else. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I was wondering, you know, of course I want to look at the book and, you know, it didn't start with you. Even the title is quite, quite inviting. And there are a few.